What's up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you how to build a sitemap in Jekyll. Now I'm going to show you how I do it because the way I do it, you don't need to download anything, install a gem uh, or a plugin or anything like that. This will work off of everything that is already built into Jekyll. So you're not going to need anything else but your Jekyll project. It's very simple to do and I'm going to show you how you can exclude certain file types and even exclude certain pages. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and I'll show you how I do it. All right guys, so I have the config.yaml file open here and it's nothing that complicated. I've just got the title. This is for the website, the title for the website. Um, but the only reason I have this file open is so that I can show you I am using these collections. I set up my own collection called events and I'm using those as well alongside of posts. So I have three different kinds of uh, pages that we need to pull. I have the typical pages in the website, I have some posts, and I have some events. Okay, so that's why I'm showing you this file right here. But let's go ahead and go over to my sitemap.html file. Now this page is a very simple layout right now, nothing complicated, and it's not going to get much more complicated than what you see right here. Now you'll see I have this header right here and this tagline, and that's fine. And then uh, beneath that, this is just the header for that page, uh, I have this section, and within this section I have three uh, subsections, I guess you could say. I have a pages section, I have an events section, and a uh, post section and I'm using an h1 just to separate them so we can separate all of the pages in our sitemap by type um, so I've just got a unordered list started for each one of those and ignore the class on it that's just for the styling that I have done previously so let me go over and show you the actual web page and what that looks like right now. This is what this page looks like. I just refreshed it. Um, so we've got the headline, the tagline, that's fine. And then right here we have a list of pages, events, and posts. So nothing complicated, very simple layout. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull in all of our pages, all of our events, and all of our posts. So let's come over here and let's get started on this. So we're just gonna write a little bit of code uh, with Jekyll and we're going to write curly brace percent sign uh, space we're going to say for page in site dot pages and then we're going to do percent sign and close that curly brace off and let's come down here and write end for just like that and then now in here we are going to write a little bit of HTML. So we're going to write a list item and we're going to write an anchor tag inside of that. And let's close off the anchor tag and close off the list item just like that. And now we're going to need to populate this with a couple of things. So we are going to want to populate the href here with let's go site.base URL and then we're going to do site. Uh, no, not site, sorry. Then we're going to do page.url. So that'll point to the page. And then we need to fill out the actual text that we can see. And we're just going to use page.title. Now, uh, before I go any farther, all of the pages that I have that you can go to and view and, and see on this website, they all have a title. Okay, so that's important. They have title in this front matter. So if we go over back to our website right here and refresh the page, let's see what happens. All right, so it just loaded in a bunch of web pages. Now there's a couple that are here that you can't really see, uh, but they are there. The reason you cannot see them though is because uh, there is not a title declared in the front matter on those pages, but that is not uh, super important right now. Um, but what I do want to go ahead and do is I want to filter out all of the pages that are not um, HTML pages. So I have a few pages here. So you see I have two PHP pages and that's being used for the mailer on this website and we don't need to be pulling those pages into here because there's no point at all for you to be going to that and, and looking at it. So let's go ahead and let's click on uh, right here uh, between site.pages 
we are going to make this say site.html underscore pages. And now when I refresh this, all right, there's some of them gone now. That's good. But there's a couple other things. There's another way we can filter some of these pages out. So if we come down here and inside of this for loop, we're going to write uh, another little bit of code. So we're going to write curly brace percent sign percent sign curly brace and inside of there we're going to say uh, unless page dot exclude and then after this uh, little bit of HTML we're going to uh, end the unless okay all right so what this is doing is it's saying uh, for all of the HTML pages in this site, we're going to put them right in here, unless in the front matter of that page, there is a variable exclude. All right, so I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. If I go to this PHP file, actually, you'll see I have exclude set to true, and that's it. That's all it needs. If you put this uh, on any page, it will not show up in here. Okay, refreshed. Got it. That's all good uh, and we don't need to worry about anything else there so this is all of our pages that we want it's completely filtered down to only HTML pages and any page that does not have this exclude set to true in the front matter so that's how you filter all of that out all right so how do we pull in all of our events which is the collection that I showed you in the beginning well we need to write almost the same exact code so we're gonna copy everything that we put right here and just paste it in here now we do have to change a few things we need to change this statement here this loop we need to change this to for event in site dot events now that is going to filter through all of the events that we have. Um, now before this will work properly, we need to change these here as well. We need to change this to event.url and we need to change this to event.title because if we leave it page, it will just pull the URL and title from the page that we're already on, which would be our site map page. So now if we come over here and refresh this page and scroll down, you will see events and event one. And I'll show you right here, went to event one. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is pull in our posts. So we're almost done. Uh, we've got all of our standard HTML pages pulled in here and filtered out to only HTML pages and pages that don't have the exclude variable set in the front matter. We've pulled in our collection that was set up called events. And now we're going to pull in our posts. Now, again, this is going to be very simple. We're just going to paste that same thing in there, change this from for post in site dot posts. And then we're going to need to change this to post URL. And we're going to need to change this to post title. Now, if we come back here and refresh the page, there you go. There are all four of our posts. And if I show you right here, we have post uh, one, two, three, and four. So that's really it. That's all you need to do to uh, set and build a sitemap for your website. It's, it's just that simple. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to install a plugin and customize a plugin. This is just so simple. It works so easily and it will work in any standard Jekyll website. All right, guys, so that's gonna be it for this video. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you can use this with any Jekyll project as is. You don't need to download and install any plugins. It will just work. Now, if you have another way that you do it that you think is better than this, let me know because I would love to hear how you do it and see how that actually works uh, compared to how I do it. So I love seeing different ways to do the same thing because sometimes one works in a situation better than it does in another. But so far, this seems to be pretty great for every project I have needed it on. Well, that's going to be it for this video. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And if you like the content that I'm creating on this channel, head on over to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash Zachary R. Newton, where you can help support this channel and help me create better videos every week. Now, this is the first video of 2017, so I hope it's off to a great start. Please leave your comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys think. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.